within the African culture, you know, we are raised as farmers. Back home, you have your own house, you have a small land that where you do gardening. So it's really very important to the community. Culturally, food unites people. And coming here, we lost that connection, that knowledge of farming, that connection to the soil. Also for people to have that freedom for them to grow their own food, for them to get connected to the land, touch the soil, all of that is therapeutics. My name is Thuch Ajak. I am the co-founder of the United African Farm. So I work here as a project uh, coordinator. And also in the community, I also do a lot. I work at Asylum Seekers Resource Center too, and I run a community radio on Tuesdays. This rice is a sign of peace, prosperity, progress. In our village, when there's an occasion, any joyous occasion, you see our people, yeah. they are throwing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When big people yeah, come, yeah. when big people come yeah. to you, you throw in it. Yeah, yeah. Let God bless you. Yeah. Open your way. What we are here to do, yeah. let it be peaceful. Yeah. yeah. We come all across. So, like you could see, I come from east, uh, eastern part of Africa. When okay, I come from the west, which is Liberia. We have people from Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana, rest of the West Africa, which are involved in the farm. Also, we have the Sudanese, the South Sudanese, Kenyan, Ethiopian, Uganda. So it's sort of uniting. It's like the West and the East meeting together. I was born during the war, the war that took 21 years in South Sudan. So my family and I fled to Kenya, which would settle in Kakuma refugee camp. So I went there when I was really small, like 10. That was in 1995. So throughout until 2006, that's when I left Kakuma refugee camp to go back to South Sudan. By that time, the peace, uh, which is the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, CPA, has been signed. And I went back to the country to go, you know, with my high school certificates, I went back to the country to go help, you know, help um, be part of the nation building. And that's when I got opportunity to go to university. So I went to university and started agriculture, specializing in crop protection. So that was in the Upper Nile University. And then our country went to war again, which is in 2013, which was really quite devastating. And that's when I decided that, OK, it's better that I, I migrate to come to Australia to look for uh, you know, opportunities to study looking opportunities to work. And then I came here to this beautiful country in 2015. So I got married here and started a family here. I have three kids. My mom is here with me now. And I've been in Melbourne since 2016. When I came to Australia, I didn't really get it that easy to get into the agricultural sector. So I started uh, looking for farms on my own just to start a market garden. And by that time, it was a bit difficult, and I was not much conversed with how farms work here and all of other details. And that's when I started first volunteering at Ceres, Joe's Market Garden, to get the connection that I need. And then I started at my backyard. So I started growing some few veggies on my backyard in Carlisle Springs. And that's when I met Mama Queer, who was on the other side looking for the land to grow. And we, uh, joined together and founded what we call the United African Farm. Y'all come and eat. Mama Kuiya, she's a community mobilizer. She has a lot of cultural knowledge, a lot of traditional knowledge that we can learn from her. And also within the African context, we have that respect for the elderly and play a vital role in that, in connecting the community, in bringing the people together. We're going to cook it here. We will be running the cooking classes here. Yes, okay. <laughs> All of us back home in Africa, as children, as kids, just as my grandchild is, our eyes open on farm. We see our parents, we see our grandparents. All that we have to wake up to in the village is farming. If I will cook anything, I have to grow it. When I grow it, 
Then I, you know, pick fresh, and then I'm, I feel that I'm in my village, and then I can cook it. It's very much important because this is the taste that I know. It's fresh, it's healthy. Uh, the farm is uh, three acres of land, so it's divided into two main. So one is the community area, and, and this is the produce garden. So, so this is basically where we do the growing. And then the other part of the farm is where the community van, community festivals happens. From where I come from, I come from a tropical uh, climate. If you put a seed down, you expect it to germinate in a few days. But here, sometimes it's quite a challenge, like, you know, putting in an order for seedlings, it takes you eight weeks. The coldness doesn't really support uh, some of the tropical crops to grow here. So we only have one window, which is the summer, and sometimes we might get them in, sometimes we may not. So that has been a bit of a challenge for us because crops like okra, you know, mean so much. And, uh, and we can put them in throughout, except only in the summer. And sometimes when it is a short summer, you may not harvest anything. People had to change what they cook and also to learn some of the few available crops that are within Victoria, that are within Australia, that they are not used to back home. Like Egyptian spinach, which is very common in our culture, is, we call it khudra. It's not easily found here, so we have to substitute it to uh, either broccoli or kales in, in a place of that. We're going on a great spade because we have an elderly population that come here it's easier for them to tend into the rice bed than when they grow straight from the land. Also, we had flooding here, so we're trying to raise it up so that we can have a bit of a production. Last year, we had all this area flooded and we lost a lot of crops. This is a clay soil, so it's good, but we are in a lower part of the, of the area. So basically, when it rains, there's a lot of water that is stagnant here and there's no good drainage system that we have here. What gives me joy sometimes, people coming here, finding purpose, working the garden, connect to each other, and also give a positive narration. You know, you've seen a lot of media coverage about the African over-representations and all of that. So I feel like I'm giving back to the community. I feel like I'm also contributing in changing narratives and also to find opportunities for young people. Once you're born in the city, you don't want to get dirty, you want to look for this job and that. But there are people that are connecting back, that are connecting back to the roots, that are connecting back to grow food, you know, which is really quite exciting. My hope for this farm is to unite us with the Australians. Australians, you are, and that's why we are, because we depend on each other. We depend on each other. We hold each other's hand. We are there for one another. So my future, my thinking, in fact, the picture that I'm looking at now is this farm is going to bring us together. It will break the fear that I fear is going to build more love. I feel joy when I see that there's a progress. There's something that I'm contributing to the community. And that's why I keep doing what I'm doing.